I got these two smiley face masks randomly with the plans on using them in my You Are an Idiot But Scary series. But I decided to use one when I started getting some comments to do Fire in the Hole from Geometry Dash. I didn't know that the masks were sold out and that these two were the only two I would be able to find. This led us on quite a painting journey. My name is Michael and I make creepy videos at Scream 1210 Productions. This is Geometry Dash But Scary Behind the Scenes. I chose the bloody smiley face mask to start with for Fire in the Hole. I painted it green and I also painted the green icons hammer and all to match him. I wanted the green icon to crawl out backwards and twisted, so I had to have the mask on the back of my head and it took a few times for me to get the movements right to make sure that my head was looking in the right direction. What the hell, man? <sighs> Three, two, one, now! And look at my left arm. And down. No, <laughs> wrong way. <laughs> and look at my left arm. And look at my right arm. Water on the Hill is the introduction of Sarah, voiced by Alex Furness. Alex is an incredibly talented voice actress, and I've gotten the opportunity to work with her on a bunch of different shorts here at Scream 1210. It was so much fun creating the character of Sarah with her. The other cracked smiley face mask I painted blue and also added his wide smile and tongue. <laughs> I got two awls and I broke the handle off of one of them so I could have some lobotomy stabbing action. I had a lot of fun writing and voicing the monologue that Blue gives Sarah before the bloodbath. <laughs> For Rock on the Ground, I changed the green mask to red, and I filled in the smile with liquid latex so that I could paint his frowny face. Getting the set ready, my character Ian got turned into bathwater, so I'm adding some blood around. For the blood in the bath, when you mix all the primary food coloring colors together, they turn black. So I added that to the bathwater, and I also added some bath foam for floating chunks in the water. I knew I wanted to reference the slaughterhouse level, and Rock on the Ground felt like a great moment in the story for it. Mirroring the slaughterhouse, I knew all the coloring and color correction would be red, so I had the bathwater be a blackish color so that it would still have texture and show up with the red lighting. Red blood under red lighting sometimes makes the blood difficult to see on camera. Now. <laughs> it's a cold evening and I'm just painting these shoes so they match red and I can get one of my last shots for Rock on the Ground. <laughs> In my original plan for Rock on the Ground, Sarah didn't survive. But I had grown attached to the character after all she'd been through, we'd been through, 
and wanted to give her a win. So I had her defeat Red. <laughs> For Wind from the Landscape, I painted red purple. I also covered the bottom half of the mask in liquid latex so I could paint purple's open yelling mouth. And I definitely got some exercise in with this video because Wind from the Landscape was a lot and a lot of running. For Air Detected, I painted purple. It took a while and a few different coats to get the right mix of yellow and orange to make the Air Detected mask. For the dots on the top and bottom of the mask, I used some Nerf darts. I cut the ends off and painted them black and then glued them on the mask. For the eyes, I painted some Easter eggs and I used some ribbon to create the line down the middle of the face. I wanted the inside of the mask to be horrific and something no one would want to put on. So I used this Halloween clear hockey mask. I wasn't going to see the front of the mask, but I painted it yellow just in case. And I used liquid latex and black paint to cover the holes in the mask. For the mouthpiece of the mask, I used a piece of plastic tube, a lid, and some pins. I painted them all black and glued them together and put them on the inside of the mask. I caught myself a few times on the pins. Just painting the box that will be holding the mask with our two main colors, yellow and blue, something bad will happen soon. I found these slippers the last day of filming for Air Detected. I debated about getting them, but I'm really glad I did. I think they add a bit to Sarah's new look. They fit perfectly with something bad will happen soon. And I even had the idea of Sarah trying to use them to stop the poisonous gas from leaking out. For Area Confirmed, it took me about a day to make the video Sarah watches inducting her into the experiment. I had been planning for several episodes to reveal the color icons were actually real people trapped just like Sarah. So for the last few episodes, I had had them slowly getting more and more just like people in masks. The shot in the video Sarah watches telling her what will happen if she removes the mask was a tricky shot to get. I had to start the smoke with my foot so it would be out of frame. I had a black head cover on and the missing face mask on top of that. I had to put the hockey mask and the air detected mask together and then I had to feed the tube of the air detected mask through the missing face mask, being careful to avoid the pins so I could get the shot of the mask being ripped off. I had to get this shot while shooting air detected so I could change the air detected mask to the area confirmed mask Sarah is wearing at the end of the episode. After ripping off the dots, Easter eggs, and ribbon, I painted the whole mask black just to kind of give me a flat base and then painted it yellow for the area confirmed mask. For the ending, I did two versions, one with a lot more blood. It's available on Patreon at Scream 1210 Productions, along with more gorier versions of some of the other horror shorts. For Shadows from the Grave, I got to have a cameo of someone who started Scream 1210 with me many years ago, Michael Poole. He also plays the voice of the various Bens in the film. And he has been in several other recent Scream 1210 shorts. I finally added a third mask to the mix. 
for shadows from the grave. I covered the mouth and eyes with liquid latex to kind of give it a gravestone texture and painted it. And once again, used Easter eggs for the eyes, but this time painted them black. The downside of the egg eye masks are that they are really hard to see out of. I also got to play a field agent in Shadows from the Grave. Doing some quick shopping, getting some stickers and patches. I wanted the first Ben to return after his lobotomy and go on a rampage and make some havoc. And going up. I also decided I wanted Sarah to get some revenge on Purple. But because I only had those two smiley face masks for the icons, I didn't have Purple anymore. Purple was now the area confirmed mask. So I had to remake the Purple mask. For lightning on the road, it was all about pulling the threads together. I spent a lot of time working on the two videos Sarah and Ben watch in the storage room. I even got to do some location shooting for Lightning on the Road. For the Lightning on the Road Alpha Model Mask, I used some horns from a buffalo mask I had, even though I really didn't want to cut off the horns, but it worked perfectly for the demon mask. The mask that was now purple, I painted into the demon mask. I made the eyes using carrots from some plastic food at Dollar Tree. And I was able to make the teeth from the mask using the knives in the food sets. You will all have to let me know in the comments if you want to see more. We still have some demons that could return for a sequel. It was an exciting challenge to try and take such a silly game and make a story inspired by it. And your comments and enthusiasm for the series means more than I can say. Thank you all for watching and for your support. And why did I post this here instead of the second channel, Scream1210EXE, where I usually post behind the scenes videos? Every now and then, I post some behind the scenes videos here too. I hope you all enjoyed Geometry Dash, but scary. More videos are on the way.